Hi and welcome to another episode of the Pennsylvania Voter Information Network. This is Larry DeMarco with the Philadelphia Bar Association Chancellor Forum District Attorney's Race. Today we have the profile and answers of Joe Kahn. His website is seen below where you can find more information about him and his candidacy. Joe is a former federal and local prosecutor and Northeast Philadelphia native. Joe is running for Philadelphia District Attorney to restore integrity to the office. He describes himself as a progressive reformer and is respected by judges, prosecutors, defense lawyers, and law enforcement as being fearless, focused, and fair. In order to run for the 2017 Democratic primary, Joe left the U.S. Attorney's Office where he had obtained convictions against violent criminals and corrupt politicians and lawyers. He began his 16-year career as a prosecutor at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, where he specialized in prosecuting sexual assault, domestic violence, and child abuse cases. Let's hear what he has to say. It's about sharing immigration status uh, with federal authorities. And it is my view that it is not the role of a local district attorney's office, certainly not this one, to be enforcing federal immigration law. Now, this is not an abstract question. This is a question about the real world in 2017 and beyond, with the realities of the current administration, which is pursuing an immigration agenda that, in my view, comes from a place of hatred and bigotry. Our president has shown us who he is with respect to his views about immigrants from certain countries and about people of a certain faith. This is not an academic or abstract issue for me. I am the son of a Muslim immigrant. And when we hear talk from our president about forcing people to register with the government or having their immigration status uh, depends upon what faith they have, uh, this is very personal. But I am also a career prosecutor, and I understand that we are all less safe when immigrant communities fear the police. We have so much work to do with all communities in Philadelphia, whether it's immigrant communities, it's people of color, it's members of the LGBT community, who for various reasons feel that they cannot speak up, that it does not make sense for them to report a crime or to talk about something that happened to them. And the role of the district attorney's office is to bridge that gap between law enforcement and the communities that they serve. And we can't do that if we're enabling a racist or bigoted immigration agenda that is not the business of the district attorney's district attorney's office to enforce. I will not enable Donald Trump's immigration agenda. I will stand by Philadelphia being a sanctuary city throughout my administration. Stop, stop. <laughs> Mr. Khan. So I have to say, I, I find myself agreeing with Mr. President again. Um, but what I, what I will say, uh, and, and one place where we differ certainly in our experience, is that I could not be more proud of my, of my experience as a prosecutor, understanding that my role was to seek justice, not conviction. And the time, the countless cases in which I did further investigation and not only made sure that we were seeking justice, but that I exonerated people who should not have been charged, people who were innocent as a prosecutor. I understand that is the mission of a district attorney, and I completely agree that what is needed is a change in the culture. Um, I am the only candidate who was a candidate for district attorney back in the fall, back when it appeared we were going to have four more years of the current district attorney. And I challenged him, and I called him out as a candidate for DA to do something beyond having one part-time attorney staffing the conviction review. I'm glad to see they've gone from one to two. I think probably we need to do more. And I think that in terms of how you structure that, I think we need to go beyond just training and retraining people in the PCRA unit. We need to make sure that the conviction integrity uh, or conviction review unit is completely separate in terms of the line of, uh, of authorities, that they are not reporting to the same people that the law division reports to, so that we can have independence and we don't have crossover. And that we have not just a cultural change, but a real thirst, a real appetite for justice. I alone have had the experience at the U.S. Attorney's Office where we kept track of police misconduct and where we understood that if we saw police misconduct, we didn't want to just look the other way. We wanted to find out if those things were happening on a larger scale so we could launch investigations Thank and root out bad cops. You, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Conrad. So yeah, we, we do agree a lot. Uh, we are the uh, poorest big city in America. When you take somebody's home, leave them homeless, that is strange. We don't pursue that policy in other areas of criminal prosecution. We don't seek the maximum sentence for, for uh, uh, you know, for the maximum prison sentence in every single case. 
But for some reason, the district attorney's office has pursued, in recent years, a scorched earth policy which makes no sense. And we have to have more fairness and compassion in the pursuit of any forfeiture policy on day one uh, in a new administration. Number two, we do need to make sure that we take away this profit motive from the program. And, and I uh, come from a place of having been a, a, a lifetime student uh, from kindergarten through 12th grade of the Philadelphia Public School. And it breaks my heart to see the, the public school system getting less and less funding every year. And, and I would prefer to designate that money directly to the public schools who need it now more than ever. Beyond that, though, how do we get reform? Well, I'm very pleased to be in a position, having been a candidate now for over six months, and having had these conversations with uh, members of the Philadelphia de delegation of both the, the Pennsylvania State Senate and the State House. And there is a broad receptivity to hearing about my experience as a federal prosecutor in having both criminal and civil forfeiture available, where in criminal cases where we had a conviction in child exploitation cases where a computer was used, in firearms cases where a gun was used, where we pursued forfeiture after conviction. But in white collar cases, where we wanted to make sure we had restitution for victims of fraud, which the district attorney's office is not prosecuting, we could use civil forfeiture to seize those assets and freeze them. Thank you, Mr. Con Mr. Con okay, So I, I hope I'm hearing agreement, but I'm not sure. And let me be clear. I was the first, and I hope I'm not the only candidate. I have called for an end to the prosecution of nearly all lo the lowest level drug offenses, the cases in which we are criminalizing addiction. Um, we have to deal with our current um, drug addiction crisis, which is a problem of crack cocaine and opiates, and treat it like the public health issue that it is. That's not to say that the district attorney has the power to legalize or outlaw anything. And we need to be clear about what we can promise and what we can't promise. And I can promise as district attorney that I'm going to use the resources of the district attorney's office wisely and effectively. And what that means is that the police will still need to make sure that we are targeting the people who are doing the dealing, who are trafficking, who are the big players. Right now, we are not prosecuting doctors who are running pill mills. We are not prosecuting healthcare providers who are illegally overprescribing opioids. We are not prosecuting the scam artists who are trafficking human beings under false pretenses and dumping human beings like they're garbage into Philadelphia to leave Philadelphia to deal with people who are struggling with addiction and think that they're coming here for treatment. There are so many things that district attorney's office can be doing in terms of big fights, and instead we're, we're prosecuting these low-level cases and pretending like we are succeeding because we have a high conviction rate. We have to put an end to that. We need to take on the big fights. We can't keep allowing the police lab to be testing evidence for low-level drug offenses while we're not testing rape kits that leave sexual assault victims with, with a lack of justice. We're going to put it an end to this focus on small fights and take on the big fights when I'm district attorney. Thank you. We're talking about the MOLA. The first assistant has to be ready to step in and fill the roles of the district attorney. And when I think of role models for district attorneys, um, for me, the, the sort of the, the North Star is Ken Thompson, who is a federal prosecutor who is uh, well known for taking on corruption, particularly police corruption, who ran on the message of criminal justice reform. And he ran for district attorney in Brooklyn. Um, rest in peace. He, he, we tragically lost him last year. Uh, but he said a new standard in the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office for fairness, for conviction integrity, for making sure that we were rethinking um, our, some of the practices that led to over incarceration or mass incarceration. And um, a person like, like Mr. Thompson would be the kind of person I want uh, as my second in command in the DA's office. Mr. Frank, Mr. Thompson. So I, um, I, I agree with much of what's been said, especially the point made by Mr. O'Neill. Um, I have very little um, regard for the, the old mandatory minimum uh, drug sentencing. Uh, that treated so many people that were differently treated the same, where there were no safety valves, there were no real considerations of different factors in the case other than in the crude um, uh, metric of the amount of drugs that were involved. Um, but when you move beyond drug sentencing, um, there's a reason that Mr. O'Neill cited the child sexual assault cases. Uh, when I was in federal court as a prosecutor uh, handling child exploitation cases, um, very often it was common for judges to look at a defendant and identify with that person because they came from the same background. They were both college educated. They both came from means. And it was hard to imagine putting a person that looked like or that person identified with in prison. And we have to make sure that we are being uh, fair and we are providing equal justice. And yes, we need to deal with the over-incarceration, the mass incarceration epidemic in Philadelphia and in Pennsylvania that has disproportionately impacted people of color. At the same time, we need to be confronting and, and, and rooting out the implicit bias that exists in the system. And we need to make sure, it doesn't need to be 50, 30, you know, 60 years in jail, but making sure that if a person commits a, a, a serious corruption offense, a police officer commits 
perjury or someone commits a, a, a serious crime against a child, that that person just doesn't just go home on house arrest or on probation, and that they're held accountable. I think that's what people expect, and we deserve, everyone deserves to have fairness in our system. Mr. Connors. There are dozens of things we need to do to better serve our victims, and, and it starts with protecting them, making sure that the victims understand that witness retaliation, which is an epidemic in, in Philadelphia, particularly when it comes to gun violence, that it will be taken seriously in a way that it has not been in the past. We need to go beyond that, though. We need to make sure that we are standing up for victims and letting them know that the district attorney is going to be on their side. That's the reason that it's important that we are a sanctuary city for immigrant communities on the reform front, to know that we are not going to let them be vulnerable. And so many of the victims that I've advocated for were when they were testifying in cases of sexual assault, domestic violence, uh, child abuse, to make sure that the district attorney was not going to leave them out to dry. The first time I ever stepped foot in a courtroom was as a student attorney representing children that were charged as adults in criminal court. And we took an, a holistic approach to our cases in the, in the legal aid clinic that I worked in in law school, where we didn't just have attorneys, but also social workers that had a holistic approach to treating the child well beyond the conclusion of the criminal case. That's the kind of clinic we need to have, not just the children, but all who intersect in our criminal justice system. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Connor. All of these indictments that we're talking about of police officers in, in recent years came from the office that I have the privilege of, of serving, led by a U.S. attorney appointed by President Obama. As district attorney, I'm not going to defer and trust whatever U.S. attorney that Donald Trump picks for our district. I am going to make sure that the district attorney is seeking out uh, uh, police corruption because the, the, the truth is, is that the vast majority of police officers do great work and a very few number of bad police officers make them less safe, make our city less safe. Those cases didn't come out of thin air. It took whistleblowers like Kevin and other assistant district attorneys pointing out this kind of conduct. That's the kind of result <laughs> we should expect from a neighborhood-based uh, court system that hasn't done enough. At the U.S. Attorney's Office, we had a caution list. We kept track of, of police officers that we were suspicious of, and we investigated those officers. We had an appetite not for convictions, but for justice. And that's the kind of culture we're going to have when our district attorney of Philadelphia. Thank you, Ms. Brosen. and Sir Khan. Thank you. Like so many of you, um, I have dedicated my entire career to seeking justice in Philadelphia. I was born with a, uh, and have had a lifelong love and, and dedication to the city uh, that came from being born to a, uh, a mother who was raised by a single mom because she lost her father to addiction at a young age, uh, who met a tall, dark, and handsome stranger from Pakistan in her early 20s and realized when they fell in love that the only place for a, a Muslim man and, and a Christian woman to live in Philadelphia was a Jewish neighborhood. So <laughs> they raised my brother and me uh, in a place where we got to go to great public schools where we were embraced by a community and we had an opportunity to get great educations. And I was able to take my legal education that I got at the University of Chicago where I learned my constitutional values by one of the greatest professors uh, any, anyone could have, a man who went on to become the 44th president of the United States, who gave me a lot of opportunities um, to, to go on with my law degree to do things other than be in Philadelphia, other than be in public service. But I have dedicated my entire career to advocating for the most marginalized, the most vulnerable people, because I believe that Philadelphia needs progressive prosecutors. And I think in the district attorney, we need a progressive prosecutor, someone who has learned how to take on tough fights like I did at the DA's office when we were understaffed and under resources, under resourced, and someone who knows to take on big fights like we did at the U.S. Attorney's Office where we do with major social issues like gun violence, like human trafficking, like corruption, which exacerbates poverty in cities like Philadelphia. We need someone who can take on the tough and big fights that is a progressive prosecutor. That's who I am, and that's why I want to be your district attorney.